Hey everybody, welcome to Midday Market Update. Uh, my name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at Vector Vest. I'm glad that you're here, glad to be here. Hopefully you had a great weekend, first trading day of the week, and we'll see what goes on from here. Very interesting start to the day, as a matter of fact. Uh, the market looked like it wanted to go up, and then it gapped up and it came back down, faded the gap. Let's go see what's going on. If you can hear me, by all means, please respond in the affirmative, preferably with VV Nation and let me know that I am coming across loud and clear. I think this is going to be an interesting week. We had the Fed, uh, people digested it, and I think that still moreover, people are uh, realizing that the market is, if it, if, it, if it isn't already there heading for a recession, I think the reality of that is kicking in. Our market timing signals, for the most part, are all down. The market is coming off a level of uh, resistance. A lot of different things outside of the news that's going on in the market that from the Vector Vest system will let you know exactly what's going on. So that's a cool thing if you are a subscriber to the Vector Vest system. You have access to all of the pertinent information and being able to sift through what the buzz is to make a better decision. So that's what it's all about here. If we're looking at our color guard, a lot more yellow than anything, whether we're in a recession, going into a recession, however you want to look at it from an investment perspective, where are we? A lot of yellow lights in the color guard. The yellow lights tells me to be cautious. The yellow light doesn't tell me to to panic and jump out of everything. That's not what's going on. So no matter what happens in the market on a daily basis, no matter what's happening in the market on a three month, six month, one year basis, what we're telling you as a subscriber, as an investor in the market right now is to be more so cautious and not be knee jerk reactionary. Does that make sense to everybody? Type a yes or a no in the room, all right? Does that make sense to everybody? Type a yes or a no in the room. Um, everybody wants to listen to the news. Everybody wants to have their take on the market. Everybody wants to put in their two cents, but with it being a subscriber to the vector vest software, I can see that no matter what anybody else is saying, even Glenn, even Glenn, no matter what everybody else is saying, I need to be cautious in my portfolio right now. All right. Not to panic, not to panic. Just be cautious. All right. So with that being said, let's go take a look at what's going on in the market today. And over the last three months, we'll do that. This is today. All right. The market gapped up nicely this morning. And I think to the start of the week, you know, the euphoria was, whoo. All right. The market's going to rebound from last week. All right. From that, since then, the market has totally faded the gap. All right, um, totally faded the gap and we're trading lower than where we started. All right, does that mean again, the Katie bar the door? No, it just means that today is a down day. Uh, with all of the yellow, you should have already been uh, protecting your profits or tightening stops on the stocks that you own. As a matter of fact, let's see this, do this. We got about 150 people in the room. Let's see if you can bring me in another 150 people. Share this link on your social circles. All right. Let's get other people prepared for the week as well. Let's see if we can get another 150 people in the room by your actions, because I can't do it. It's up to you right now to invite your, your friends, your people in your circles uh, to the live chat right now. Joey can put up the link so that you can copy and paste that link or copy that link and share it onto your social circles, all right? So let's see what we can do. To Other people need to be ready for the week too. Other people who are investing in the market that you know need to be ready for the week as well. All right, as we're talking, the market's pulling back some more. We've had a, a low session so far for the day of about 55.96 on the Vector Vest Composite. For those of you who are new, the Vector Vest Composite tracks the move of about over 9,000 stocks. We feel it's a better representation of the broad market move. Hello, uh, Haas, how are you? All right, so we're looking at it today. Big jump up today, big uh, pullback to fade the gap. Let's go put this on a three-month graph. Look at that. This is that level that I've been looking at, one of the levels. This one is sitting at 56.87 by way of resistance. Um, man, just 
It's just been a tough market sitting in a big channel right here. We broke out of the bottom of the channel here, sitting in a big channel right now, back and forth, digesting what the Fed has done. CPI comes out tomorrow. PPI comes out the day after, or no, I think CPI comes out. Man, something's in my eye. Sorry about that. CPI comes out Wednesday, and I think PPI comes out Thursday. And that's true. Thank you, Police SWAT. The debt ceiling is an issue as well. I honestly, I honestly don't think that that's going to be. I, I think it's more dramatic than anything. I don't think that our Congress allows us to not raise the money. All right. So you know, I don't like to be political. But the president saying that there's going to be no compromise. Uh, the House put out a put out um, something. The Senate's going to probably turn it down. Yo, I, I look at it this way. It shouldn't be about politics when it comes down to America paying its bills, even though it is. Unfortunately, it shouldn't come down to politics. We need to pay our bills. All right. We are the leading country in the whole world that people look to. And if we jack this up, man, that's going to be a bad stain on us as a country, as a leader in the free world. All right. So that's about as about as political as I'm going to get on it. But um, I, I doubt very seriously that we're going to get to a point where uh, we don't raise the debt ceiling. And the problem is with that, we've been raising the debt ceiling on both sides of the fence for the last five presidents. And even earlier than that, we've been raising it, raising it, raising at some point, though, the, the poop's going to hit the fan and you got to have to something's going to have to happen. Something's going to have to give. We're going to have to stop spending as much money as we are. But again, that's another topic for another time. That's another topic for another time. What I need to talk to you about right now is the atmosphere that we're in and how you as investors in the market um how you in the market can make money. Lou said, Glenn, don't forget the credit has a limit. That credit has a limit. Well, it credit doesn't have a limit when you keep spending and you, you tell everybody you can pay your money, pay back, pay back the bills. Uh, I, I don't know. All right. Do you mean absolutely to sell half the positions to be safe or cautious? Oh, Siberia. Siberia is talking. What did Siberia say? Siberia said something. I missed it. Sigh. I missed the Siberia, but somebody else saw it. Where? I'm looking back in the chat. You said absolutely. Oh, you said absolutely that you understood what I was saying. So that's what Siberia was saying. Luke. Uh, America's mortgage is around $95,000 per person, which is crazy. Uh, it went back as far as Nixon. Nixon started the unleashing, uh, raising the debt limit. Man, it went back that far. At uh, some point in time, you have to be held accountable. And that's... No, nobody wants to be that guy that holds the country accountable because that would be bad. That would be pain. Nobody wants to be, no president wants to be that guy, Lee. I, I think we're beyond that point. No, no president wants to be that guy. All right. So that's my synopsis on what's going on in the market. If the market's got some legs to the upside, it'll look past this level of 5687. Notice that we're at another level of resistance. I just drew on today's activity, looking at 5620. We'll see what's going on from this high, though, from this little swing high. If you look at that from this little swing high, what are we doing? Oh, what are we doing? We're trending lower. I'm going to leave that line up there for the next couple, next few days. We are definitely trending lower. And yep, that's a good line. Where are we at now? Below that trend line. That's where we stand. That's where we stand. I'm not even using fibs right now. I'm just looking at the movement of the vector vest composite support resistance and a trend line. That's it. And right now it doesn't look, it doesn't look so pretty. Sure enough. Mm -hmm. Sure not. All right. With that, let's talk about some news that's moving the market. All right, let's go. And this is going to be a very interesting story. Look at this. America's factory boom drives sales surge for excavators, steel, and trucks. I didn't look at it from this perspective, but these are industries that are bound to be on the move to rise up because of the building of uh, new semiconductor factories, the booming of building uh, battery factories, the boom of even from a nuclear perspective, excuse me, nuclear perspective as well of drive of building new reactors or even new um, 
new nuclear power plants. So that's an outside thing that I never took took note of. But here's industries that are going to be on, you know, talking about the building industry, steel industry, going to be on the move because of that. Slowdowns in other parts of the economy. These could be industries that are going to be on the rise. So let's go look at Caterpillar and Nucor. Let's go put that into my watch list. All right. My big news stories. Let's go get there. Let's go to Nucor. Nucor. Where is it? Yep. NEU and Caterpillar. Going to add those. I think that I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody has taken that into consideration, but I am now by way of this story that because of these manufacturings, uh, a manufacturer is coming back to the United States, especially for semiconductor or the battery factors, factories, especially for the EV space. Um, these are two industries that could be on the rise. Um, uh, building stuff and steel. All right, let's go to the next story. Tesla is catching up. Tesla China deliveries drop in sign. Price war is taking its toll. This is why I've been bearish on Tesla. I still think that Tesla is a great company. Financially, it's a great company. But something had to give. They were willing to give up margins in order to sell a lot more cars. Well, how about they sold a lot more cars but were they able to, with all of the gigafactories and stuff, did they sell more cars than they thought and weren't able to build enough? Um, shipments from Tesla's Shanghai facility dropped, a sign that consumers may be casting around for other electric vehicles as manufacturers across the country drop their price. Uh -huh. So maybe it wasn't that they couldn't produce them, but it started a, a, a pricing war um, and people are going to look for the lower dollar cars. That Boyd company in uh, China, $11,000 for a fully electric car is no joke. Digging a lot of people are going to buy those cars. Delivery of China made Model Y fell 14% from March, according to preliminary data that China's Passenger Car Association released Friday. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I've been bearish. I still think short term Tesla's going to feel some hurt because they bit into margins with all of those sales of the cars. Next one, SVB and First Republic failures are just the start of a lengthy banking crisis. How many of you saw the video that I made over the weekend about the banking crisis? Type a one in the room. How many of you watch? I just put out a video on Friday about a banking crisis at hand. More and more stories, more and more articles are backing up that the other shoe has not fallen yet, folks. That the other shoe hasn't fallen. And I did break down how we got here. Guys, if you haven't already, please check it out. It's on our YouTube channel. It's on our YouTube channel. Um, broke down how these banks got there, why they're there, and what happens from this point. All right, I still think a lot of twos are coming up. Man, um, I'm telling you, go go check out the video on our YouTube channel. Let's have a look at which regional banks have performed the worst since the collapse of SVB and what most of them have in common. And Dan, the most that they had in common was a big part of the video, that they borrowed money at low interest rates because we were at historically low interest rates. They lent money at a higher interest rate. And what happened was the lending of the money at the higher interest rate was supposed to offset the borrowing the money at the low interest rate. Well, when interest started rising, the short term borrowing got to be much higher than the long term lending. And that's why they're upside down. And that's why they're upside down. So, Dan, I talked about that in the video of how we got here. All right, how we got there. Several podcasts confirm Glenn's banking opinions. So Siberia, it's a news article that's out there. I wanted to bring it to the VV Nation and, and, and actually tried to make it easier to understand why we're there. All right, um, let's go to the next story. Tyson Foods fall after swinging to an unexpected loss in quarter two. Now, it's interesting about a company like Tyson, everybody's got to get some food. Everybody likes chicken. Chicken is tip, tip, tends to be um, inexpensive to get, all right? 
if Tyson is having an issue with unexpected loss in quarter two, think about all of the other companies like a Tyson that put out the chicken, that put out the food, because inflation is an issue. Unexpected loss. Well, I don't know if it's so unexpected because inflation is an issue. All right, inflation is an, is an issue. Looking forward in 2023, Tyson expects to post revenues between 53 and 54 billion, while the adjusted operating margin may be 8 to 10 percent, driven by volume growth, productivity, and discipline. This is interesting. Discipline revenue management. A lot of people are in the in the the field right now of trying to manage what they're doing and and how they're doing it to manage the money the right way. Joanne is right. It's rising the interest rates too fast. Well, the interest rates shouldn't have been risen as fast as they did. I think they should have just did one 100 basis points. But they rose it, raised it fast because they were late to the game, Joanne, um, because they were too busy calling inflation transitory. Oh, it's not a problem. The economy is great. It, it'll be fine. But a booming economy brings about higher inflation. It's just a product of what it is. I don't think that you can have a booming economy forever and not have a, an inflation problem. All right. So, Joanne, a lot of people are in the same boat that you are, that he raised too fast, too, you know, too much too fast. But if he came to the game at the right time, we could have avoided that. I think he had to do it. So Tyson, let's go put Tyson in here. Uh, TSN, let's go put that in my list. So Tyson got beat up because of earnings. TSN, put that in there. Let's go see where that, where that one sits. And Tyson's in the middle. Caterpillar right now is at the top by VST at 1.09. Let's go to the next story. Hilton. Hilton Grand Vacation Board approves a new $500 million share buyback program why they need to make the bottom line look better look better hgv i uh, said its board of directors approve a two-year share repurchase program authorizing the company to repurchase and uh, up to an aggregate of 500 million shares the new repurchase plan will commence once the existing two-year repurchase plan approved in 2022 for 5 million 500 million is fully completed Raising more money. Um, you know, listen, HGV may repurchase shares at the open market in privately negotiated transactions or in such other manners as determined by the company. $500 million, that's a lot of money. That's a whole lot of money. All right, so uh, let's go put this into my list. This is HGV. Hilton Grand Vacations, HGV. Let's go see where that sits in my list of stocks. Rising the U.S. federal government debt is astonishing. One trillion to thirty-one trillion in just four decades. And who says it is sustainable? It's not sustainable. At some point in time, where do we hold ourselves accountable for the money? Well, as long as we got a printing press, we can keep printing as much as we want. Tyson's got a VST below one. This falls to number four in the list. Uh, number three out of four. Let's go to the next story. Next story. Uber. Uber got its mojo back while Lyft faces existential crisis. I wanted to see about this existential crisis. Lyft's first quarter was a bumpy ride. Revenues rose 14%, topping $981 million with that. Um, but Lyft's operations still resulted in a net loss of $187.6 million, or $0.50 cents a share. So that's Lyft. Existential um issues so but uber got its got its swag back let's go over the last year list law lift lost 50 percent of its value that's a lot when rice when reicher who's the former retail executive at amazon.com took charge last month as co-founders logan green and john zimmer decided to step back from the daily roles lift embarked on a journey of serious job and cost cuts in an effort to keep up with Uber. Hmm. All right, so we're going to look at Uber. We're going to look at uh, Lyft, and then we're also going to look at DoorDash. DoorDash delivers better than expected Q1 results. So all of these Uber Eats, DoorDash for delivering food, Lyft, I don't know if Lyft is doing uh, food stuff or not. 
why do banks have eight trillion in uninsured deposits? Why do cash reserves, not new loans, dominate and increase? Listen, Dan, you're asking questions that I don't have answers to. But the the whole um, banking industry, though, has about six to eight trillion dollars in money markets. So the banking system is liquid. The banking system, and it's in that video that I did over the weekend, the banking system is liquid. Do they bail everybody out? No. Uh, JPM uh, bailed out a bank, bought a bank, you know, makes them, you know, they're already one of the four top four banks that are too big to fail. I'm thinking that if a lot of these regional banks go under, a lot of the banks that are too big to fail are just going to get even bigger. They're still going to get even bigger. That should concern people so uber lyft and doordash all right let's go add those to my list uber comma lyft and dash all right let's go peep them out where they sit thanks to vector vest i made money shorting lyft last year way to go john where's lyft now at the bottom of the list john look at that as looking coming up as a story not being able to keep up with uber Lyft is at the bottom, and it's a three-time loser by relative value, relative safety, and relative timing at its sell. Whereas I look at Uber as at least a hold. It, at least it's got RT above one, and Dash uh, it's got RT above one as well. So Uber and Dash are at least rising, whereas Lyft is bupkis. All right, let's keep looking at my stories. Next one is, ah, I like this. Immu uh, immunogen nearly triples on a variant cancer drug phase three results. How many of you would like to have a list of companies that are in phase three to keep in your hit list? Type of one. How many of you would like to have a list of companies in phase three to put into your hit list? Type of one in the room. All right. So immunogen um, I like I, I like looking at companies that have phase three, at least to keep on my hit list. But I want to know if you guys would like to see something like that. Immunogen, I think is IMGN. Let's add that to the list. IMGN. Ah, big move on it. IMGN. But is it worth it all the way around? Is it worth it all the way around? All right. Wow. Look at that. It's at the top of the list. Now, this is typical for a bio company to be grossly overvalued. But when I do find a bio company or drug company that's undervalued, I do pay extra attention to it. This is news driven, RT above one, fundamentally not sound. Where's their earnings growth, negative earnings growth. So this is a short term play based on news. This is not something that I would want long term. This is news driven and it's only up 1.93% for the day but probably it's going to rise a little more in the next couple of days based on the news. All right, I'm not ready for individual cards, uh, the individual cards, individual stocks yet, Mr. Dragon's channel. I got you though, hold on, all right? So real quick, I uh, pay for a subscription to a, to a service that gives me uh, phase three drugs. I want you to look at these real quick. I right, take a picture, whatever you gotta do, is 11 drug companies that are in phase three. Write them down real quick. Take a picture. I've got 11 stocks. And I think on the Monday sessions, I am going to start um, providing for you some of the top stocks that are in phase three for you guys to keep your eyes on. You good with that? Type a yes or a no. You good with that? Hurry up, though, because I got to move. You got to take a picture of this. Whatever you got to do, I got to move. If you're writing them down, write faster. If you're writing them down right faster, all of these stocks are in phase three um, fashion right now. All right. So with that being said, I think that I may be trying to give you new stocks on a weekly basis of stocks for you, at least if nothing else, to keep your eyes on. All right. I always hate to miss those stocks. You know, it says, hey, it's in phase three. And it's, well, these are all phase three stocks right now. All right, go back to that list. Let's go back to the stories. What else I got? Occidental Petroleum. Ha! Huh? It's amazing how one person, albeit um, Warren Buffett, can move a stock. Occidental drops after Buffett said not seeking full control. All right, so that's self-explanatory. It's a big move on the stock to the downside just because Warren says, no, I don't want that. 
I don't want that. Sharon says, yes, thanks. You are welcome, Sharon. How do you feel about Palantir? Oh, interesting, Kyle. We're going to talk about that. I'm a big fan of Palantir, but earnings are coming out for it. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about that in a second. All right, let's go put up Occidental Petroleum, OXY, into the list. That's a good stock, though. And just because Warren Buffett said, oh, I'm not going to take control of it. They said, where is it? Number three out of nine stocks now. Uh, undervalued good upside potential, good earnings growth. I do like the stock. All right, let's go back into the stories real quick. Apple, is Apple stock a buy after the iPhone makers March quarter earnings beat? I love Apple. I'm not trading it right now, but I might have to take, keep my eyes on it. What's up, Natasha? I may have to keep my eyes on it. So let's throw it, that's the headline. Let's throw it into the list, AAPL, AAPL. Let's go take a look where it sits. Now it's number 10. First stock now by way of VST. Got to love that. Apple going to India. Apple's already open in India, I thought. I thought they already started selling in India, Kyle. I know that they were going. That's going to be big for them. I, I think that that's the number three or four uh, country by uh, purchasing power. Anybody back me up on that? I mean, you got China, you got us. I think India. India is the next one. Somebody say yay or nay to that. You know, would somebody say yay or nay to that? And I think a lot of people are trying to do a lot of business with India. I think a lot of people are trying to do so. Apple, I thought that they were already selling into India. I thought that they already were. I thought Ravi says yes. I thought that they were already selling into India. All right, let's go to the next story. Bed, Bath & Beyond. I hate that it's going out, but companies that could pick them up. How about Walmart? Started investing in India, says Ravi. I got that. Indian has India has a very large, very large growing middle class. Thank you, Chris. Kyle says 1.3 billion and the biggest English speaking country. Hold on. The biggest Indian in English. Hold on. Aren't we the biggest English speaking country? I, I'm looking. Aren't we the biggest English-speaking country? Am I am, am I law? I'm just I'm just asking. I'm asking for it. It says Chris says no, we're not. Who's the? You said India is the biggest uh, speaking English-speaking country. Maybe maybe I learned something today. Now talking about Bed Bath and Beyond, people that could be buying them up. Apple sales in India is six billion per Bloomberg. Yeah, no, we only have three hundred and fifty million people. Wow. So, really, we're not. Why, why would I? Well, I would think that we were. Cause I'm cocky. I'm a cocky American. That's what it is. All right. Walmart, Target, Dollar Tree. Interesting that Dollar Tree is on here. Uh, Costco, Dollar General. So Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and Five Below are possible companies. Um, that that's true. India was an English colony. You're right, Albert. You're right. Um, interesting that there's a lot of companies. I'm not going to put all of these companies in the list. I'm not going to put all these countries in the list, but I will put Bed Bath and Beyond in the list. All right. Um, uh, what is that? BBBY. Oh, and it's uh a pink sheet now. BB BBBYQ. Now at the bottom of the list. Man, the company's trading for 18 cents. 18 cents. And who thought the day that Bed Bath & Beyond would be that way? It may be if they count people who don't speak English as their mother tongue, says Beaver Tail. India was ruled by British but never colonized. See, I'm getting some, I'm getting, look at this. I'm getting some education in here. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to add Palantir yet. I'm going to get to Palantir, Kyle. How do you think high RS stocks be influenced with changing interest rates? Ooh, good good call there. Now, keep in mind that high RS stocks are the safest stocks in the database. These are companies that consistently make or exceed their earnings expectations. So it's a great question from that perspective. With higher interest rates, these companies are going to be affected by their ability to continue to earn uh, to, to continue to earn money at the rate that they were. I think it's going to affect those country, those companies longer term. I don't think it happens overnight, but I think high relative safety companies will still point out the safest companies in the database. But with the rising interest rates, 
I think a lot of those values will start to go down. Does that make sense, Mr. Dragon's channel? All right, that's how I think this plays out. We're still able to still see overall out of the over 9,000 stocks, which stocks are the safest, but you know, rising interest rates will definitely affect a company's ability to meet or exceed earnings. Apple makes phones in India now. See, I, I thought that they were already doing that. I thought so. I thought that they were. That's going to be big for Apple. It really is going to be big for Apple. All right, let's go finish out my stories. Uh, earnings, and this is what I wanted to look at because one of the companies that's big on my mind here is Palantir. When it, what day is it? Uh, I saw it up here. I, I swore I saw Oh, there it is. Palantir reports today after close. I'm a big fan of Palantir. Is Apple a buy? Ravi, um, let's go look. Apple is a buy. Apple is a buy. I think earnings helps to put, you know, they beat earnings. Uh, I think that helped to push it up. Relative safety is still a safe company. They are growing their earnings at a clip of only 7% a year, though. All right, they're only growing at a clip of 7% 7, uh, 7 a year. Uh, RT is above one. The VST is the highest in the list of 11 stocks. The upside potential there is backing off a little bit. All right, but it is a buy right now. I would make sure that on the day that I'm thinking about getting in, that I would make sure that the stock is going up. Chris, I'm surprised by that number. Almost everybody I met in India, they spoke English as their second language. Again, I'm just learning some some English here. I mean, some English, some um, history here. English is the first language, 259 million in India, 258 million in America. Fascinating info. Again, I, I'm learning some, I'm learning some, um, some definite uh, history today. Mr. Dragon's channel says we're not in a confirmed up call. I, I'm, I, I hear that. So the, the question was, is Apple a buy? Yes, Apple is a buy. What am I looking for? I'm looking to make sure that one, that the market's in my best interest to buy and that the stock is doing what I wanted to do, which is go up in price. Remember, not everybody in the room, Mr. Dragon's channel, is conservative. A lot of people are a lot more aggressive. Well, the primary call is down. A lot of people who are prudent. Well, the DEW is down. And for those people who are uh, conservative, the, prim uh, the confirmed call is down. So overall, is it okay to buy stocks? The answer to that question is no. But we're not in a trending market. We're in a trader's market. And if you're in a trader's market, you're going to have your up days and you're going to have your down days. If you're a little bit more aggressive, you'll take advantage of what the market gives you on a day over day basis. Does that make sense, Mr. Dragon's channel? You'll take this is not a trending market where I'm trying to hold the stock longer term. But if I am in a trader's market, I will take advantage of the up and down days for trades to help to grow my portfolio. All right. All right, couple of other. So Palantir is on my. I I do like Palantir. I've done a few videos on Palantir. Um, I may do another Palantir video for tonight, or some stocks that are on my mind. On out of the list of companies, I may do a video tonight on some of these stocks that are that are out there for earnings. I may do that. I may just do that. Occidental. Uh, big news because of what Warren Buffett said, but I think it's a good solid company. Um, uh, uh, maybe Under Armour. I'll look at maybe five or six stocks from this list and do a video. You guys, would you guys like that for the week to look at um, potential big winners or losers based on the upcoming week on these earnings? Yes or no? Disney is on here. I think Disney still got a PR issue to overcome. I still think that Disney's got a PR issue to overcome. Fighting with DeSantis in Florida, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I may do that for tonight. Uh, Lucid is on here. Lucid's been in the news on the bad side. I might pick out five or six stocks to do a video on tonight based on earnings. There's a lot of companies out here that I could do a stories on. Uh, either stocks to, to, to consider to holding on to, or at least trading, and stocks to stay away from. I, if y'all want to just follow Buffett stock, then just buy Berkshire. Who said that they just wanted to buy Buffett? Everybody knows that, Kyle. If you, you can just go buy, and everybody knows that. But who's got the money to go buy uh, uh, Berkshire? All right, who, 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 got, who got the money to go buy Berkshire? Mm, a lot of money right there. And guess what? He's not splitting it. He don't care that you can't afford it. That's all I got to say about that. All right, that, that's all I got to say about that.
He don't care that you can't say it's all about the making of money. I know. Go go ahead and buy it, Carl, if you want to. Go ahead and buy it. It's, it's Berkshire B. Let's actually let's go throw that on the list. Berkshire B. B R K B. How much is it? So the eight. Uh, let's go see. Berkshire B. Still three hundred twenty-seven dollars. If you can afford it, by all means, do. All right. I don't know if there's a cheap way to get into Berkshire. Um, uh, let's go. I'm going to show, see something. Um, what is a Berkshire ETF? Let's see if there's a Berkshire ETF. Ooh, the two ETFs in Berkshire and it's in the portfolio. That's not what I want. I wonder if this is, if there is BFOCX. That's a mutual fund though, right? Uh, the the uh, the vipers, uh, the vipers is a good way to buy, is a good way to track the vector vest composite. The VTI is a good way to track the vector vest composite. It doesn't track nearly as many stocks. Um, Glenn, how was your weekend? It was a good weekend, James. Uh, Jake. Yeah, that's a fun. I'm trying to see if there's an ETF. Does anybody know what ET? If there's an ETF out there that tracks ETF that tracks Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, Hathaway. There it is. There is no ETF that mirrors Berkshire Hathaway exactly. Um, the, the close is the spiders, really? Hmm. I didn't know that. Did anybody else out there know that? The VTI, again, is, is the Vipers. And again, the Vipers or the VTI really tracks the vector vest composite kind of close, but without not with as many stocks as we track. Did anybody know that? That a good way to track you know, um, Berkshire is to you the, is the spiders. Let's go look. I didn't know that. Anybody else know that besides nobody? What is how much is the spiders? Four twelve. Well, you might as well go get Berkshire B then. It's less than the spiders. So I guess it's not a cheap way to buy in the Berkshire. This is the cheapest way. This is the cheapest way would be the 320s and it's optionable there you go which is another if you don't want to try to spend 327 dollars per share you can play the option you can play the you can play the option and you know something i'd rather if i still don't want to play 30, uh, 327 i'd buy a call that that's the better way to do it glenn sir berkshire b is a hold and not a buy what's the rationale um why is it why so a couple of things need to happen one the price has got to be above uh, the stop price, which it is, the stocks has got to be trending away from the stop price, which it may be, but maybe not by enough. RT has got to be above one and VST. Oh, VST needs to be above one. How about VST is right at one? So Berkshire, so the, there's four things that need to happen. The price needs to be above the stop price. It needs to be trending away from the stop price. RT needs to be above one and VST needs to be above one. There you go, Ravi. VST is not above one. I think all of the other three are going on, but VST is not above one. All right. They own a lot of privately held companies. There you go. I got that. All right. And the last story I had, was just quick update on EVs. I'm liking this. Has anybody seen the new looking Prius hybrid? It looks good. The new Toyota Prius looks good. Anybody, there's the Mustang. Did you know that there was a, an electric Mini Cooper? Look at that, an electric Mini Cooper. But what is this? The Toyota BZ comeback SUV. More and more commercials I'm watching. This is the Ionic. I believe this is the Ionic, uh, if it's Hyundai. A lot of these cars is the Model 3. A lot of these cars are looking super hot. But, you know, how many of you agree with this? That instead of pushing everybody towards straight electric vehicles, why not have put some emphasis on hybrids? I think that would have been a natural move from combustion cars Um combustion combustible uh, whatever the the cars that we have now move over to hybrid i'm not sure i'm i'm on the hydrogen point yet all right i'm i'm still not sure i'm i'm real you know it just just the name is and more so it's just the name it's just the name uh cooper runs on triple a batteries no it doesn't no, that's funny now that's funny 
<laughs> it doesn't run on AAA. It's a small car, though. But I think that <clears throat> the natural order of things should have been, let's look at hybrids, and then let's go into electric. That's the way we should have gone. But I think we put all of this emphasis <clears throat> on electric. The thing is that the demand is there now. The, the, you know, a lot of people are like, man, I'm not going to buy like it. That, that, that thinking is changing. That thinking is changing. More and more people are looking to get into electric vehicles. They're coming down in price. The problem still is if the battery goes out, the cost of the battery is exponential. The, pe the, 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 the cost of a battery is exponential. I, Natasha says she loves our hybrid. And I, I'm thinking that these, these Priuses look, look sexy. Anybody, anybody, <clears throat> anybody agree with that? Anybody agree with that? These hybrids, I, I like that, that Prius hybrid. It looks, it looks good. Uh, rip the bandaid off and save the weight of gas engine plug gas, says Brian. Hybrids still don't make good miles per gallon uh, uh, on the highway, not city highway mix. So Beaver Tail, I think with the combination you know, the engine, the gas engine <clears throat> charges up the electric side. So you drive on the electric side when you need to. I think it gets really good ga uh, miles per gallon hybrid wise. I think so. I think so. All right. So that's all of my stories. I'm not going to put all of those cars. That was just for the purposes of keeping up on what was going on with EVs. The biggest mover out of the stories this week is Bed Bath & Beyond. I, I don't know who in their right mind is buying up into the stock to push it up. Let me see what the volume is. I don't know who's who's pushing the stock up unless it's stories that um, they may be getting bought. The volume's not there. I see the move today. Nice level, bouncing off support. Am I a buyer of it? Uh, no. I don't know what's pushing it up. And I'm thinking that it's possibility because they're in bankruptcy possibility of that story that I showed other companies that may buy them up. Whoever gets the market lead in supercharging stations wins big. I think the lead is already in Tesla, Kyle. I think Tesla's already got the lead in that. Lee says his Avalon hybrid gets 48 miles to the gallon. Michael says he has a Kia Nero. He gets about 50 miles per gallon. I'm thinking, are both of those, uh, Michael, is your Kia, Nia, Kia Nero, is that hybrid? I don't think that these hybrids are half bad, folks. I, I, I don't think that these hybrids are half bad. I saw a Carvana story, uh, Ravi, that it was moving up. I'm not touching Carvana. I think it's still overall, if you look at it in Vectorvest, it's not a good company. Fundamentally not sound. Anyone wanting to buy BBY might as well buy meme stocks. Kyle, BBY is already a meme stock. It's already a meme stock. I, I don't know what's pushing it. I, I don't know what's pushing it, but I'm not comfortable with it today. Yes, a, it is a hybrid and it's 2018. They get better, says Michael. I'm loving the idea that we should have gone down the, 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 the path of looking at a hybrid first, getting more people into hybrids first. But I know you know who had a big say in that? Tesla. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. You don't think Elon Musk had had something to say about, yo, we need to be pushing these people toward these electric cars. That's my conspiracy theory. That's all I got to say about that. But I'm sure he was in somebody's ear pushing, hey, yeah, we need to go all electric. Yeah, I got you. All right. That's my conspiracy theory. All right. So those are all my stocks from the big news. Uh, let's go back to the VST. The best stock out of there was Apple. Uh, we don't have chargers yet, says Ernest. Where are you? I mean, chargers are all over the place. If you go, when you go parking, even in Charlotte, you go parking, um, there's electric car spots. You go to the airport, there's electric car spots. Uh, you go to supermarkets, there's electric. You go to a hotel. I, I think that, you know, you say you don't have chargers yet. I'm not sure where you are, Ernest. I don't know where you are, Ernest. Jeremy says, I know from experience that Carvana is not good. I'm surprised they're still around. Well, uh, I'm going to put that in here. CVNA, Carvana. I'll add that to the list, even though it was a story that I didn't put up. 
I figure it would be further down the line. Look at that. It's up 19% today. There's nothing good about the stock. I don't, I don't know. There's nothing. Are you talking about another meme stock? This is probably another stock that I would put as a meme stock. Eugene said he moved from a previous uh, Prius to a Model L, a Model Y. What about purchasing Berkshire as an option? Yeah, Mike, I said that. I said, if you don't want to spend $327, I would just go buy the option. Oh, yeah, I, I actually brought that up. I'd go look at call options if you're bullish on it, put options if you're bearish on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. The company consistently makes money. They grow their earnings at a clip. Um, Berkshire at only 3% a year, but they're so diversified and so, you know, they're, you know, the stocks that they get in are not for quick explosive. These are long term holds, no matter what the market is doing. Uh, Warren Buffett says he doesn't buy stocks. He buys companies uh, and he's got a track record with it. So even though the earnings growth is only 3%, that makes sense with a long term strategy in the stocks that they buy all right so i'm just keeping that in, i'm just putting that out there all right so these are the stocks that made and i'm gonna put up um glenn's weekly picks i do want to look at palantir i'm gonna put palantir on the list um and actually you know what else i'm gonna do i'm gonna put my picks for the week these are probably gonna be what my video is going to be tonight um, let's go back to the earnings. I want to look at Palantir. I want to look at Lucid. All right, so we're going to get Lucid up here. LCID. What else? Looking real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Novavax. NVAX. Uh, Occidental Petroleum OXY. Uh, I don't know if I want to do EVGO. I do want to do Disney. D-I-S. Uh, I don't want to do Beyond Meets. I don't want to do Robin Hood. I want to do Krispy Kreme only because I like the donuts. Yeti is a big mover in the space of drinkware. I want to take a look at that. Uh, Soundhound for AI. All right, I think those are the stocks that I want to look at tonight. So I'm going to put them all on my list. Uh, LCID, Lucid, NVAX. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what LCID, what COVID is going to do for Novavax. Uh, the who just called it off, said it's no more big thing anymore. So that's going to affect uh, Novavax, Yeti, Y-E-T-I, comma, and Soundhound. All right, these are the vi these are the stocks that I'm gonna do the video on tonight. MVK is that one of the stocks that is coming out with earnings? What's what's MVK? Give me the the, the company name. Is that one of? Remember, I'm doing the stock uh, doing a video on the stocks that are coming out for earnings this week. Um. Kavana is up 30% in the last two days and the used car market is starting to settle down and their earnings are slowly going back up. I like Carvana if you're investing right now while it's cheap. Um, Carvana is not in here, is it? I would put it in my list if it was. I'm not a fan of Carvana. Um, Carvana is not in here. Nine reports in the night. You want nine? Uh, a, where's nine? Here's the ninth, isn't this the ninth? This is the ninth. Here's the eighth. I'm looking for nine. Eight by, I see eight by eight. I don't see nine. I do see eight by eight. Uh, real quick, let me go look at Carvana. You thinking that, uh, these are the stocks I'm gonna do my video on tonight. Let's go, stock viewer, I know. Let's go look at Carvana. Let's change this, I don't want it to all put it on the 20. I'm not a CVNA. You thinking that it's a good time to buy now? 30 days, 30% 30 in the last couple of days. Let's put this on a one month graph. Big move. Three month, 
three month right at a level of resistance of 1062. It tried to break through on Friday, but couldn't last. Put this on a six month. Coming off the high of $19.87. I do see a solid level of support. Let's go add some technical stuff to it. Um, do I have a technical? Do, do, do. Dividend, EMA squeeze. There it is, technical. Let's go look at here. The DPO just went positive. MACD just went positive. And RT just went above one. Kyle, you may have a point. From a technician standpoint, RT just went above one. Stock over the last couple of days, above average volume. DPO just went positive, And MACD just went positive. If nothing else, folks, um, Kyle brings something to the table. Kyle takes brings something to the table. That's from a technical standpoint, but from a fundamental standpoint, nothing's good about the stock. Fundamentally, the stock is not great. Relative value, relative safety, only thing that's hurt, hurt, helping it right now is RT. Earnings growth is negative 12%. So if anything, this would be a trade. This would be a trade. I'm with Lou. It's like catching a falling knife. Be careful. But the technicals match up that it may be a good short-term play. Long-term, I don't like it. Long-term, I don't like it. All right, let's go back to watch list viewer. Um, the big news, let's go see where the money is going today. Let's go see where the money is going today. Wow, boil. Ooh, I wonder in the jockey club, did Jerry do anything with my cold? Did he get rid of it? Did he get rid of it? Anybody in the jockey club? I hope we're not still holding cold. Boyle would be the good play. I probably would have switched them out if I was playing the jockey club today. Actually, I got the jockey club tomorrow. Natural gas is up. That's where the money is going. Yes, it stopped out. Did we make money? Did we make money on it, Boston? I hope we did. Commodities are moving today. Or gas, oil, copper, uranium. Gold, energy, commodities on the move. We made about 2%. I'll take that. I'll take that. So it looks like today the money is going into commodities. All right, we'll do one last thing. Uh, weekly customer picks. Let's look at, I'm only looking at five. I'm only looking at five of your stocks. First five that come up. First five that come up. Don't stop. Get it, get it. Get it, get it. Come on, get your stocks up there. CPG, one. Comma, way to go, Kiwi. He's hot on it. Palantir, two. Next, I'm only looking for three more. ING, three. You also slow today. NVO, four. And Wing, five. All right, those are the five I'm looking at. If I'm looking at these stocks, the best by VST is NVO. Uh, Actually, three out of the five have VSTs above one. Only two do not. ING and Palantir. Palantir is a very, very, very speculative play. Look at this. Growing their earnings at a, a point of 25% a year. I like Palantir. I just think that a lot of people really, truly don't understand what Palantir does. And they keep getting government contract after government contract after government contract. You know, and I think that's how they're, they're you know, let me go see what their sales looks like. If that's the case, sales, sales growth, 18%. It's the second highest sales growth rate out of the five stocks we're looking at. Whereas Wingstop has got a sales growth of 43%, followed by uh, Palantir. So I'm a big fan. I've done the videos on Palantir. I like it. Earnings are going to come out. I think they beat earnings, but I don't know what goes on forward guidance. Wingstop way overvalued it does the company makes money grows their earnings at a clip of 23 percent the upside potential on wing is not there it is a buy recommendation i'd be careful with a stock that's this way overvalued i think uh the only stock that's really undervalued here is cpg um trading at seven dollars with a value of 1032 uh, it's got an upside potential. It should outperform a AAA corporate bond by 45%. RT is above one. And they grow their earnings at 22% a year. Uh, ING, 
fairly valued. All right. Upside potential. The fundamentals are not there. RT is above one. Ugh. They have negative 4% earnings growth rate. All right. So those are your five stocks that you wanted to take a look at. Um, let's graph them real quick. Put them on a three month graph. I like the move. Big channel. A lot of gappiness in NVO. Be careful with that. All right. A lot of gappiness because as quickly as it can gap up is as quickly as it can gap down. Be careful with that. Oh, you wanted LNG. Psy. LNG. All right. Let's go remove that one. You want an LNG. You got to put the capital L or else I look at it. All right, LNG. LNG. Uh, it's still like number three. Undervalued, uh, fundamentally sound. Chenier Energy, what is that gas, natural gas? Um, fundamentally sound, just not in an uptrend right now. RT is below one, grows their earnings. Look at that, 36% a year. I do like that stock and it's undervalued. All right, now let's go look at the graphs of these stocks. I do like LNG. I've liked LNG. It's just been tough. That whole natural gas space has been tough. That's sitting in a channel. Be careful. I'd like to see it break out of the channel. Wingstop. Uh, is that an earnings play? Yes, it is an earnings play. The three and eight is still solid after earnings, but watch, they are converging, trading two days off the three month high. All right, so just be careful with that. If you've got some money in that and you've made some money, uh, don't be afraid to take half off the table. LNG is coming off a level of support. LNG is coming off a level of support. I like the cross between, um, cross above two levels of former resistance i'd like to see the three eight cross on good volume i do like the move up but if i'm looking at the stock over the last what three months yeah look at that as much as i like the move now i need to see some confirmation of move one to three in the eight and then break out of the downtrend. Earnings came a few days ago it went down i do like the rebound i do like the rebound uh, I need to see a little bit more before I'm ready to jump on board. CPG, nice bounce off support, big down day back below that formal level of resistance. Now, now uh, it was a formal level of resistance. Now it comes back and becomes a level of resistance again. Technical shows me that it's trending down. I'd be careful with this one. It's probably a different, a better stock I can find in that space. Um, Palantir, this is there's the earnings coming out today. I like the move. And you know something? It's got a profit target right now sitting short term of about 865. Uh, the fun, the technicals are not there yet, but earnings could pull it up if it beats, but it's going to be the forward guidance. All right. It's going to be the forward guidance. All right. That's enough for today. We did. A, we covered a lot. We covered a lot. Uh, you guys typed a lot of great stuff in here. We didn't get 300 people. I still am pushing for that number of 300 people. The only way that that happens is with you, though. That's the only way you guys got to help me to get at least 300 people in the room. And then we're going to move it up to 400 and 500. I think that we put out the, the information that people need to hear. All right. We do the work. You reap the rewards. All right. We do the work. You reap the rewards. I just need to get the new eyeballs here. Don't forget that on May 19th and 20th, uh, we have a Los Angeles today. It's live and in person. It's the only way we're not recording it. It's not streaming. If you want to meet us, four of us will be here. My boss, Ray, uh, I'll be there. Steve Chappell will be there and Jim Penner will be there. So four of us will be live in Los Angeles, May 19th and 20th. Uh, if you go to our website, you will find a link to sign up for the live event. We've still got seats available. All right. We thank you, Kyle. Kyle says, nice little session. I subscribe. That's what we're looking for. We're and I, Kyle, bring your friends. If you subscribe, bring your friends. I appreciate you being here. How many, how many likes did we get? Uh, let's go peep that out real quick. Only 69. You know me. I like to try to get to 100 likes before we leave. Boston, put the link up there. Thank you, Boston. I appreciate it. Let's see if we can get it. If it was worth it for you to be here today, just worth it for you to stop by, hit the like button doesn't cost you anything to do that. And even if you're in the background and you didn't talk at all, you can at least hit the like button. All right. Um, what else? We've got our regular session for the mobile app on Friday. Everything else is still the same. I think uh, the stocks that we just talked about in here will be my stocks for the 6 p.m. video. Uh, earnings play. I asked you. You, saw, you said you wanted to see that. So we'll see that. 
Badger says, I don't understand why more folks don't join these webinars. I get an actionable piece of information every Monday. Appreciate your efforts. There you go. Thanks, Joey and Glenn. Listen, it'll happen in a time that it happens. All right. That's why I ask you guys to invite folks. All right. This is over. I got to go. Till the next time, be, be on the lookout for tonight's 6 p.m. video. All right. It's going to be at 6 p.m. Uh, be on the lookout for that. And uh, adios, arrivederci, ciao, au revoir, sayonara, aloha to all my peeps in Hawaii. Bom dia. Salam, shalom, namaste, yasu. Until the next time, folks, see ya.